Welcome back to Partial Derivatives in Thermodynamics in the First Law in Physical Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. It's very much appreciated. So what we've been dealing with in the past few videos is how to expand partial derivatives. Okay, how to get how to take a variable that's changing and calculate its change, assuming it's a function of more than one variable. Now um, we're going to do this uh, ex uh, determination for pressure, okay, how to calculate a change in pressure. Ultimately, what we've been doing in the past few videos is how to calculate changes in variables that are functions of more than one variable. So an example of such a variable is pressure. We know that, at least if we do the ideal gas equation of state, pressure is equal to nRT over V. And so I know that pressure is ultimately a function of volume and temperature. Now technically it's also a function of moles, but we know that for situations where we have gas enclosed, you know, one type of gas enclosed in the container, and there's no reaction, no gas escaping, the number of moles isn't changing, so I'm not even going to consider that. Okay, Pressure is a function of volume and temperature. So what do I do if I want to calculate a change in pressure? Well, I know that for the differential form of pressure, dp is equal to the partial of p with respect to t at constant v times dt, plus the partial of v with respect to v at constant t dv. Now ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm just going to integrate all of this. Okay, This is going to be an integral. This is going to be from p1 to p2. That's going to give me delta p. This integral is, is times dt, so it's going to be from t1 to t2. This integral is in terms of volume, so it's going to be from v1 to v2. Now, again, the utility in doing this is if you want to calculate the change in pressure, but volume and temperature are changing. Now, if I use the ideal gas equation of state, it's pretty trivial to find the partial of p with respect to t. Okay, that's it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, this derivative is actually just uh, nr over v, right? This derivative, partial of v with respect to or partial of p with respect to v, it's a little harder. You know, if you get the derivative in this form, p or the function p p equals nrt times v to the minus one, um, you can pretty easily calculate that. It's going to be um, nrt or negative nrt over v squared, right? And then you do have to do um, times dv and integrate that. Um, but sometimes um, for really complicated equations of state, and certainly um, the ones you deal with in PCOM are actually the simplest ones. P ideal gas equation is the simplest. You're going to see some more complicated ones like the van der Waals equation of state, for example. This one is written as P is equal to nRT over V minus NB minus AN squared over V squared. You can get equations of state that are a lot more complicated. And the reason for that is because the ideal gas equation is the only one that's really it's, it's simply derived from a theory. Okay, that's kinetic molecular theory. We're going to talk about that later in this class, um, later in these videos ultimately. Um, it's derived directly from, um, the, I, from the kinetic molecular theory. So there's a lot of assumptions that go in, and because of these assumptions, it simplifies it to the point that all you have are just five variables, and there's only one term. Okay, it's just nRT over V. Something like the van der Waals equation of state is really, it's not derived. It's experimental, okay? These constants A and B, which we're going to talk about much later um, in a, a later playlist, those constants are experimental, okay? Um, van der Waals was the one who, um, der who didn't derive, I shouldn't say that, he formulated this uh, expression for pressure. But it's derived, it's, it's, it's given, I should say, based on experimental data. So if you wanted to get really, really accurate with, with determining what the pressure is for some type of gas, you could have very, very, very complicated expressions because they're experimental, okay? And they can be exponentially more complicated than this. Which means that if you wanted to take derivatives they can be very, very complicated and time consuming, and perhaps you don't want to do that. So the way in any physics or chemistry course that we get around this is we actually just do some mathematical manipulations and we get some derivative in terms of a constant, something I can look up in a table. 
Because if I can if I can manipulate the expression to give me a constant, then all, all these derivatives and integrals become way, way easier. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now, the first of these constants, I'm just going to define it for you. This constant is kappa. This is not a k. Um, it's not a rate constant, an equilibrium constant. It's kappa, the Greek letter. Okay, I'll try to, re I'll try to remember to say kappa. Sometimes I do slip up, though. The expression for kappa is negative 1 over v times the partial derivative of v with respect to p at constant t. Okay, so how does that help us with simplifying this um, expression for pressure changes? Well, there's a rule in, um, in, it's not a physics rule, it's not a chemistry rule, it's just a simple mathematical fact. It works for normal derivatives, it works for partial derivatives. If I had the expression dy dx, and suppose taking that derivative was very difficult for whatever reason, then this derivative is the same as if I take the reciprocal, or 1 over its reciprocal. So it would be 1 over dx dy. These two expressions are equal to each other. It's sort of like saying if this was, if this was 3 fourths, 3 fourths is equal to 1 over 4 thirds, right? This is, you're simply just, t you're assuming the derivative basically is just a simple fraction. That's all you're doing. And so if I wanted to take the reciprocal of um, partial of v with respect to p at constant t, then I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this derivative. I'm going to multiply by negative v. And that's going to get rid of this over here. And I'm going to get negative v kappa is equal to the partial of v with respect to p at constant t. Now, the reason I want to take the reciprocal is because notice if I do, if I take the reciprocal, I'm going to take 1 over negative v kappa, 1 over this derivative, I get the partial of p with respect to v at constant t is equal to negative 1 over v kappa. This derivative is exactly what's here. So one thing you need to get familiar with, because you haven't really done it a lot probably in your chemistry career yet, but it's something that's going to be very important. If you see two things that are equal, anytime they're equal, you are allowed to make a substitution. Okay, so what I can do is, is when I see this partial of p with respect to v at constant t, I'm just going to substitute that with negative 1 over v kappa. I'm just going to do that. So that's what's ultimately going to go in this derivative right here. So it's added here, but because it's negative, I'm going to have a negative 1 over v kappa times dv. The differential element doesn't change. I'm just changing the partial derivative because that's what I'm substituting. Okay, And you can imagine I'm going to try to do something similar um, for this derivative. Now, what kappa is, kappa is, is ultimately the isothermal compressibility. Okay, that's isothermal compressibility. So what it says, ultimately, is it's related to, at least, how volume changes when you vary the pressure at constant temperature. That's why it's isothermal, isothermal compressibility. The other one I want to deal with, this other constant, is actually called beta. What beta is, is it's, it's now at, it's at constant pressure now, so it's termed an isobaric thermal expansion. Isobaric thermal expansion. And what it's, it's related to is how does the volume change when I change the pressure or change the temperature at constant pressure? So you have partial of v with respect to t at constant p times one over v. And again, um, I usually what I want to do is get these derivatives by themselves. So if I have the partial of v with respect to t at constant p, I'm going to multiply this times v on both sides and get that this derivative is equal to beta v, which means that any time I see this derivative right here, I can substitute beta v. So where does that help us? Well, there's a, a mathematical rule. It's, it's a rule, not a physical, not a chemical rule. It's just simply a mathematical fact. And it's this right here. So I have this function. It's a function ultimately of pressure, volume, and temperature, three variables. What I'm allowed to do is I'm allowed to say that the partial of p with respect to v at constant t times the partial of v with respect to t at constant p times the partial of t with respect to p at constant v, when you multiply all these partial derivatives, it's equal to negative 1. Okay? That's just a mathematical fact. So what I can ultimately do is, I, what I want to do is find an expression for the partial of p with respect to t at constant v. That's what I have, where is it? Over here, that's what I want to find. Well, what I'm going to do, and a lot of this, by the way, 
it's if you sort of have if you if you're not familiar with this field and you're certainly not yet if you're taking the class you a lot of times have to be shown how to do this but a lot of times when you're on your own doing this kind of stuff you just kind of have to play around with it and eventually if you play around with these formulas enough you'll get something that's simplified and that's how these things were ultimately done so what i mean you'd think why would it be useful to you know solve you know, solve for this, okay? Well, they just wanted to make substitutions because it looks like if you if you wanted to replace this derivative with these, and there's a negative sign, now there's two derivatives, it somehow got more complicated. But what you're gonna see, it's actually gonna get a lot simpler. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal of this on both sides. That's gonna get rid of it on this side, and that's how I get this partial of P with respect to T at constant V. Notice it's the reciprocal of this derivative. I put the negative side on this, and then I just have times the partial of p with respect to v at constant t, times the partial of v with respect to t at constant p. Okay, how does that help us? Well, recall, we just found out what the partial of v with respect to t at constant p is, right? It's beta v. So for this derivative, I can just substitute that for beta v. v is, you know, is, is v, it's volume. Beta is a constant, okay? Now, how does the partial of p with respect to v at constant t help us? Okay, how does that help us? Well, remember, um, remember how we showed that this is actually equal to negative 1 over v kappa. So whenever I see this, I'm just going to replace it with a negative 1 over v kappa. Now the nice thing is the volume cancels. You don't have to worry about that. And these negative signs cancel because remember this is all negative. Okay, Negative cancels with the negative. And so literally the partial of p with respect to t at constant v is beta over kappa. Both of these Beta is a constant, kappa is a constant, so if I have a quotient of constants, it's just another constant. Although you can't just look up beta over kappa, you have to look up them separately and then just do the quotient. Okay, So that's why I took this derivative and substitute with beta over kappa. Notice the dt was not changed, it still follows. So now I have this, this nifty um, differential form, it's now in, um, it's in uh, another form because I made substitutions, now I can just integrate. So I'm going to integrate dp from p1 to p2. Okay, that's just delta p right here. I'm going to take this beta over kappa, multiply by dt, integrate from t1 to t2. Beta over kappa is a constant. Okay, it's a quotient of constants, but it's still a constant. What did you do in calculus if you integrated something like 3 dt? Well, it's just 3 delta t, right? If you're integrating any constant times a differential, it's just the delta of whatever the variable is. So when I integrate beta over kappa dt, it's going to be beta over kappa times delta t, okay, from t1 to t2. This one is the only one that's really somewhat complicated. I have this negative 1 over kappa and then times dv over v. Remember, if I have the integral of dv over v, this is just the natural log of v from v1 to v2. Okay, so I pull out the negative kappa and I get that this is minus 1 over kappa times the natural log of v2 over v1. And this expression right here, therefore, is actually how you would calculate a change in pressure when delta v is not zero, volume's changing, and delta t is not zero, temperature's changing. So in other words, if pressure is changing, volume's changing, and temperature's changing, this would ultimately be how you go about calculating the change in pressure, okay? Now, there is another way to do it. If you had an ideal gas, right, then these derivatives are actually really easy, okay? So suppose you got a, a question on test. Calculate the change in pressure for an ideal gas when it goes from T1 to T2 and V2, V1 to V2. Well, in that problem, they wouldn't necessarily have to give you beta or kappa because it turns out that those derivatives are actually pretty easy to take. Remember, calculating some of these um, changes can be very, very difficult and very time consuming. If they were time consuming, you may want to use beta or kappa. The other application of knowing what beta is and kappa is, is there are sometimes you're not calculating a change in pressure. This is actually a relatively easy calculation. And it's actually even doable for the Van der Waals equation of state, Ridley Kwong, you can still do it for those. Um, they're actually not that hard. There are some other calculations where you might actually encounter a partial of v with respect to t at constant p. 
And suppose it is for a van der Waals gas, okay? It's not easy to solve for volume to take the derivative, okay? And if you do solve for temperature and do the reciprocal partial derivative rule, simplifying it is a nightmare. So I would just simply take, if you're given beta, just say partial of u with respect to t is beta v. That's what I would say, okay? So the reason you have these constants is that it makes things a lot easier, okay? Over the course of thermodynamics, we're, and also into kinetics also, some other aspects of PCHEM, we're going to encounter more constants and we're going to add them to our list. So the key, the key takeaway is they're not trying to really torture you, they're actually trying to make things easier because certain calculus uh, expressions can be very, very difficult. So I hope this video helped and gave you an understanding of um, beta and kappa and also how you would calculate a change in pressure. We kind of kill two birds with one stone.